The asbestos issue is not a thing of the past. It, it continues to this day. We want to end this man-made disaster. So let's ban asbestos. Thank you very much. <clears throat> and thank you, uh, Linda and organizers, for allowing me this opportunity. I will speak about the Asian Asbestos Initiative. Um, so in my presentation, I will I would like to speak um, about uh, my perspective, which is a uh, macro level perspective and also about uh, international cooperation, which we call Asian Asbestos Initiative, or AI. So why is Asia important in terms of uh, asbestos-related diseases? Um, as Dr. Lemon al already mentioned, uh, WHO estimates uh, 43,000 mesothelioma cases per year uh, among the 107 estimated uh, ARD deaths, um, of which um, more than 60% are uh, Asia origin. And uh, there is also a similar breakdown for the DALIs, which is an indicator of the disease, disease burden um, used by the WHO. Um, in Asia, um, national bans are limited to uh, only several countries and, and regions. Um, but if you look at the asbestos use um, in comparison to the global volume, um, Asia has increasing its quota from 14% uh, um, until the 1970s to 33% uh, before the turn of the century and since the, um, since the turn of the century, excuse me, uh, it has increased uh, to 64%. And countries like China, for example, the recent use uh, amounts to 600,000 tons every year. It is a major exporter of asbestos-containing products. Um, there is actually no national data for mesothelioma in China. India is a major asbestos importer and uh, there is a strong lobby, and again, there is no national data for mesothelioma. Uh, so if we take a ma macro perspective, uh, we can easily anticipate that, uh, well, the asbestos use um, by countries until around the 1970s already took tolls uh, in terms of human lives, uh, or they have been um, taking tolls until recently. Now, the asbestos use at the national level um, since then um, is taking tolls around now. If we um, consider the asbestos use uh, after the turn of the century, this will um, certainly take um, tolls in human lives um, in the coming future. So we had the opportunity to uh, look at uh, data collected by the WHO, and um, we, well, the, basically the uh, dots in the graph represent countries. So uh, there is a clear and strong correlation between the uh, national use of asbestos um, on the horizontal axis and the um, and the human toll um, or mortality from asbestos-related diseases on the vertical axis. Um, and this has already been mentioned again, again but um, there are several key international documents. Uh, the most uh, widely acknowledged is the one that has been issued by WHO in 2006 regarding the uh, declaration on the elimination of asbestos-related diseases, where it says uh, one-third of all occupational cancer uh, can be attributed to asbestos-related diseases, and, and therefore the uh, obvious uh, solution to the problem is stop using asbestos. Um, this document has been joined by other uh, documents issued by other international organizations such as the ILO. IAR, IARC produces a monograph on, um, on um, human carcinogens 
and the one that was issued in 2012 um, uh, dealt specifically with asbestos. Also, ILO produces a fact sheet, and um, in 2013, the WHO uh, documented the Global Master Plan for Workers' Health, prioritizing uh, the issue on asbestos. So this is uh, myself visiting a um, asbestos cement factory producing corrugated roofs in Vietnam in 2008. Um, but but uh, the similar essential, the, the situation remains uh, essentially the same. Um, and as you can see, they are using um, asbestos produced in, in Russia. And, and the volume of uh, asbestos used in Vietnam has been steadily increasing. Um, and there are many ASEAN countries similar to Vietnam. But it is not uh, restricted to developing countries. This is, in fact, myself in my own country, in Japan, and this was only about four years ago, after we banned asbestos. Um, and um, this is a uh, furniture shop uh, where uh, the ceiling was broken because of a uh, fairly big earthquake, and uh, above the ceiling there was um, uh, more than 1,000 square meters of uh, sprayed on asbestos. In this case, it was amosite. So, um, as uh, the, uh, Dr. Rossler mentioned, uh, even after a country adopts ban, these um, in situ asbestos uh, remains a problem. Um, and of course, this exposes not only the workers, but also the, um, the people who are shopping in, in, in this uh, furniture store. Um, so uh, this is my uh, personal take of the global situation uh, regarding asbestos. And uh, well, this may be a very uh, simplistic view, but, but uh, I, I tend to think of the uh, two groups uh, of countries. One is the uh, forerunner group. Uh, these are countries that have officially banned or banned uh, asbestos de facto. Um, these consist mostly of rich West or uh, countries of the North. Uh, these are the countries that actually experienced the uh, burden, the tragic burden of asbestos-related disease. But um, what we have, what, and what we have to look at uh, also is the uh, runner-up group um, or, or, or the countries that are sustaining or increasing use of asbestos. And these countries are essentially the ones that are uh, grouped as uh, the countries of the South. Uh, these are economically developing countries. Um, and Asia is at the forefront of, of this group. Um, but uh, we, we also have to look very carefully at the situation of the former Soviet Union countries. Uh, they are called, uh, uh, I forgot the abbreviation, but they are termed uh, CIS countries. Um, uh, the problem with these countries is that th they lack the technologies to prevent, uh, uh, well, it's, uh, well, of course, the, ma the main thing is that they, they continue to use asbestos, and at the same time, they, they lack um, industrial hygiene uh, technologies as well as technologies to diagnose and treat asbestos-related diseases. Perhaps the, the, the best way to say is, is that they lack the willingness to uh, deal with uh, the bur burden of disease. So why does Asia uh, continue to use uh, crystal asbestos? Well, um, well, number one, the public health argument has been unable to win over the economic argument as these countries are in the middle of high economic growth and um, it is a fact that uh, their, their own burden of disease is not fully evident, uh, and this has to do with the uh, latency period. It has not saturated yet. Again, um, there's a problem with the lack of the necessary technologies. And frankly speaking, uh, there's a failure to learn from other countries' uh, experiences. Another important uh, issue, and this has been um, touched on by Dr. Asian is that um, uh, the uh, controlled use um, is being advocated uh, uh, in these countries. 
Um, and this has its roots in the um, relative potency argument regarding the uh, potency uh, difference between um, crystal and um, and um, amphibole fibers. These are lobbied strongly by the exporters and used by the local industry and unfortunately are believed uh, by the national administrators. So um, in, in just my remaining few minutes, I would like to talk about the Asian Asbestos Initiative, which is the um, collaborative effort aimed at the prevention and elimination of ARDs um, with a focus on Asian countries, but we aspire to provide a model for the world. And um, so what is, what is elimination? Well, we, we think that uh, we need to uh, respond to the present burden, but also to prevent the future burden. And of course, the, the best way to do that is to stop using all asbestos. But at the same time, because we are aware that countries require um, a certain time to, for the transition. Um, we need industrial hygiene pr uh, procedures. We need uh, to develop technologies on early detection. Uh, I mean, we, we need to transfer the existing technologies to, to these countries. Um, uh, but this is already a, a, a um, um, it belongs to the paradigm of the uh, public health, and uh, these all correspond to the uh, three levels of uh, prevention that are um, already existent in the realm of public health. So we must cope both with the apparent burden and the hidden burden of disease. Um, so as a uh, collaborative effort, we have been able to organize um, uh, international seminars every year. We have uh, fortunately received good recognition by international organizations. They have participated, they have um, contributed uh, uh, financially, and also by sending uh, experts. The most recent one was just held um, uh, several months ago in the Philippines. Um, and um, the Ministry of Health of the Philippines uh, um, showed very strong support of that effort. We had representation by WHO, IARC, ILO, as well as the United Nations University. Um, and this is the toolkit that was commissioned to us. Uh, us, we mean um, uh, uh, the people working for <coughs> AAI, and um, it was commissioned to us by the United Nations uh, Environmental Program um, under the mediation uh, or, or introduction uh, by WHO and ILO. So we work together with COSHA, uh, uh, which is the uh, Korean OSHA. Uh, and uh, we produce two volumes of uh, a, a manual that uh, introduces the technology as well as uh, sharing the experiences uh, of the countries that already suffered uh, or are, is suffering uh, the disease burden. And we have one page of, uh, that, that primarily says um, the best way to deal with asbestos-related diseases is to stop using uh, asbestos. But um, as you know, the, uh, the technologies required to deal with the entire um, a spectrum of prevention is uh, very wide, so uh, we have to talk about the primary prevention, the secondary prevention, tertiary prevention, and these uh, all uh, ha have uh, certain um, expertise involved. Uh, so we have to deal with the entire spectrum of, of uh, public health measures. And uh, we think that um, countries which have already uh, uh, experienced the burden of disease can share their um, uh, technologies, but, but each country has different aspects to, to contribute. And um, the recipient country, on, on the other hand, also has different needs. So we have to match these uh, needs and, and demands. And, but it is essentially about complementing strength uh, for the technology sharing and transfer, as well as to 
uh, share experiences. So this is my last slide. Um, um, we took the macro uh, perspective in terms of research to assess national situations. That asbestos use is not sustainable, should be better advanced by the forerunner countries, and, and, um, but it has to be also tailored to local conditions. Um, and to achieve the global elimination of asbestos-related disease, we, um, global partnership such as uh, the one uh, being exemplified by ADAO uh, is key at all levels of prevention. So this is my last slide, and thank you very much for your kind attention. <laughs>